Howdy folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're going to be making peanut butter fudge. fudge is just a little bit different than chocolate fudge and a lot of people have trouble with it because they try to just substitute peanut butter in their chocolate fudge recipe. The reason for that is is because the peanut butter has a lot of oil in it. Now I use 12 ounces of peanut butter in mine because I use 12 ounces of chocolate but I cut the butter exactly in half so I'm only using six tablespoons of butter in my peanut butter fudge. And before you start cooking your fudge, you do want to find a pan to pour it in when you're done. And I'm using an 8 by 11 pan because I want my fudge to be close to an inch thick when it's cool. And you want to butter the bottom and kind of go up the sides of your pan and make sure you get it all coated really good. This will keep it from sticking so you can get it out of your pan when it's cool. And I just use a stick of butter and cold butter works best. It doesn't usually get clumps in it. This has been sitting out just a little while and you can see it's kind of, it's pretty thick in there. But it's okay. And we'll set our pan over here on where we're going to cook. Now you just need three cups of sugar, a small jar of marshmallow cream. This is seven ounces, three quarters of a cup of evaporated milk, and some vanilla. And you start by cooking the milk and the sugar and the butter. And then we're gonna add our marshmallow cream, our vanilla, and our peanut butter once our fudge is cooked. Go ahead and put your butter in your pan first. Turn it on medium. your milk and add your sugar. Now you're going to bring this to a full boil and I use a timer method on my fudge instead of a candy thermometer. And once it comes to a full boil, I'm going to turn my timer on for five minutes. From the point where you put your ingredients in until it boils, you want to stir it pretty regular but you can leave it for just a second like if you forgot an ingredient or something you can get that but you don't want to leave it for very long at all because the sugar will scorch. Once it boils though you cannot stop stirring not even for a second. You can also use a candy thermometer for this and if you use a candy thermometer you want to get it up to 234 degrees. Now I've picked another rainy day to make fudge on and if it's really humid and raining, you may have to get your fudge just a degree, maybe even two degrees, hotter than what you would normally have to get it because the humidity affects all homemade candy, especially fudge for some reason. If you are using the timer method um, rather than a candy thermometer, I'm starting to get just a few bubbles in here now, but it's not a full boil yet. So you don't want to turn your timer on yet. If you turn it on now, your fudge won't be nearly done when the timer goes off. And also, if you watch now that it's starting to boil just a little bit, it's going to grow to almost three times the size it is right now. So you want to make sure when you select the pot to cook your fudge in that you get one that is plenty big enough. You don't want to slop this stuff on you. It's going to get up to 234 degrees, which is very, very hot, and it will stick because it's syrupy. So be careful when you're making fudge. 
When I make peanut butter fudge, I always use creamy peanut butter, but you can use crunchy if you like. It just depends on what kind you like. Um, we just like the smooth fudge better. Uh, it doesn't make any difference in how much you use. Okay, my fudge is boiling enough now that I can turn my timer on. And from the moment you see those very first bubbles, you don't want to stop stirring this. You want to continue to stir it from that second until it's completely done. So I'm going to set my timer for five minutes. Now, because it's humid today, I may have to cook it just a little bit longer than that. Um, when you're cooking it, like right now, it's really foamy and really white. The color will get more yellow. It will turn to a caramel color um, or butterscotch color kind of when it's hot enough, when it's ready. And Brett was editing my chocolate fudge video and he said, how do you know? How do you know if it's going to come out or not? And it really is just a lot of experience. I mean, you may have to make fudge a few times before you get it just right. The candy thermometer though, it is easier to get right, so if you have a candy thermometer, definitely use it. Um, I've probably used one one year, and I don't know what happened to it. I think one of the kids broke it, but I started making fudge when I was just a kid, and I'll never forget the first batch of fudge I made. You literally had to eat it with a spoon. So I've got a few years of experience making it and I do kind of know how it's supposed to look and that's, you know, just experience tells you when it's going to come out. Also a dry day helps. So if you can get a dry day to make all your candy on, do the candy on a dry day. It looks like it's going to rain here from now until Christmas so I don't have any choice. As you're stirring, you do want to make sure you kind of scrape the edges of the pot occasionally to get all that sugar off the side. And now you can see what I was talking about when I said it will get bigger and it will fill the pot. My pot's a little over half full now and it probably didn't have three quarters of an inch in the bottom of it when I put the ingredients in. Okay, there's my timer. It's been boiling for five minutes and it is definitely more yellow. And what I'm looking for when I stir this is really bright, clear butterscotch streaks in it. And it's almost there. Okay. Now I've got what I want. All of my bubbles when they come up are butterscotch colored and when I run my spoon through it to stir it, I can, I'm leaving a butterscotch colored trail. My fudge is hot enough. So I'm going to turn the heat off and add in the rest of my ingredients. Now I don't take my pot off of the stove because it gets cool too quick, I think, if you do that. You want to work quick here because you don't want it to scorch while you're adding ingredients. And you're going to do a whole lot of stirring right here. That's what gives it the right texture. If you don't do it, your fudge will be kind of tacky-like. It'll be mushy. Especially peanut butter fudge because that peanut butter has all that oil in it. Make sure you get all that marshmallow cream out of there because it really puts a lot of air into the fudge and it makes it lighter, I guess is the word, and that's what you want. You don't want your fudge to be dense and chewy. Okay. Add in your vanilla, and you want at least a teaspoon of vanilla. Um, I always put a little more. I probably put close to two teaspoons. I just really like the vanilla flavor in candies and baked goods and stuff, but you can adjust it to suit your taste. And now you're going to stir like crazy. You can see as I'm stirring it that it's kind of starting to stick to the edges of my pan a little bit. Um, you 
want it to do that, that means that it's going to get firm when it cools. And you're not going to have to eat it with a spoon. I think that's probably good, even on a humid day. Peanut butter fudge, you have to make, I mean, really, I can't emphasize this enough, you have to make sure that you get it stirred up good. Good. It's stuck to my spoon. It's kind of stringing off the edge of my pot and it's already getting firm. It's not flowing out even in my pan, which is exactly what you want. I'm going to shake it just a little bit because I don't want the middle to be two inches thick and my corner pieces to be an eighth of an inch thick. It is sticking together. That means it's going to get firm, and I know this is going to be a good batch of fudge. And you can store your fudge in your refrigerator if you like it firmer, but even in the refrigerator, it shouldn't be so hard that it won't break. If you like it a little softer, just store it on the countertop. Um, and even on the countertop, it should not be so mushy that you have to eat it with a spoon. It should still be firm. You should still be able to break it without it squishing. Um, you know, as I said, pick a dry day, it's easier, but homemade fudge makes a really good gift, or homemade candy, and a lot of us have a lot of people that we want to buy for this holiday, and maybe we don't have enough money to go out and get something. You can put together some homemade candy in a nice bowl or a, on a platter. And you can give that to friends, teachers, co-workers, Sunday school teachers, all those people that you just can't quite afford to buy something for. And it's a really nice gift. They'll enjoy it. And it's not like it's something super cheap because if you had gone out and bought all that candy, it would have cost a fortune. Thanks for joining us again in Hillbilly Kitchen. Don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave. And hope you enjoy lots of peanut butter fudge this year.